Happy Hot Friday. That's what it is. It's a hot Friday. This is news. The news is hot. Therefore, the Friday is hot. Therefore, Pizza Friday. In case you don't know what Pizza Friday is, come join us on our live streams. Twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple. We do hot news live every single weekday. You're missing a lot. Come join. Do bag it. Bag bag. Why? I was going to ignore that one. Okay, well, let's talk about today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. In case you haven't heard of them, my friend, Skillshare is an online learning community where you can take several different classes in various different areas, such as business, writing, photo and film, any sort of hobby or any sort of professional thing that you want to do or any sort of creative expression that you may want to explore. It's available on Skillshare. For me, I've been taking a look at everyday minimalism, finding calm and creativity and living simply, simply because I'm a mess at minimalism. Reese, tell them, shout it how bad this room looks right now. There are so many boxes. I just can't do it. Which is why this class by Aaron Boyle at least helps me to not continue down the path that I am on right now, which is not good. And you can explore for things too. Or if you're uncertain of what's going on next, a creative challenge, a productivity class can potentially offer helpful structure for setting small goals and feeling a sense of accomplishment, especially with what's going on right now, my friends. Just. The small of it wins is really what matters. Like, we tried to go see the SpaceX launch. It wasn't necessarily that it got canceled and we wasted 10 hours in the car. It was actually just the fact that we got to spend 10 hours together. It's kind of nice. We just, it was road trip. It's a small wins even in the midst of big losses. And it's also more than affordable with an annual membership of Skillshare Premium costing less than $10 a month. But if you click the link in the video description, first 1,000 of my subscribers to do so can get two months of Skillshare Premium for free. Free, free for you to just go and indulge yourself in the exploratory task of learning things and it, new creative journeys and maybe being a bit more minimalistic with your life, which man, it's like climbing Everest for me. So click our Skillshare link down in the video description, two months for free, get your exploring creativity on, get small wins, small wins, big importance. And now let's talk about the news because that's why you're here at Hot News. Number one, we got some, Interesting rumors, reports coming out about AMD, and I don't trust it. So that's my initial upfront impression. And you can, I'll just give you the information and we'll make a decision together or separately. I don't, you're not, we're not relationally together. So therefore we don't have to agree on things. Even if we were relationally together, I would give you the freedom to be able to disagree with me. So either way, we're good. And that is, there's a report coming out of DigiTimes reported by the retired engineer over on Twitter that says that AMD's Ryzen 4000 CPUs, you know, the ones that are supposed to be launching sometime in early Q4 of this year, we're expecting the September, October timeframe, and AMD has continuously reaffirmed that it's still on track. Even only a couple of weeks ago, Lisa Su came out and said, hey, Zen 3, still this year, still looking real good. We got everything set for that. Well, this new DigiTimes report goes against all of that. Every official statement AMD has ever made and reports that AMD will be switching to the five nanometer plus process for Zen 3. And that means that Ryzen 4000 will be delayed until 2021, potentially with a CES launch, which again, let me remind you, is against the official reporting that AMD has recently done. It would be one thing if AMD released the roadmap and then has not given us a single update. However, just a couple weeks ago, we have reaffirmed commitments about Zen 3 being on seven nanometers and releasing this year. So it's hard to believe this. However, what it would do would effectively give AMD a much greater advantage over Intel than they otherwise would if they launch it on seven nanometers. Obviously, we're expecting to see some architectural improvements to Zen 3 to give us about a 10 to 15% IPC uplift. Combine that with the fact that we're also expecting to see uh, core clock increases to the tune of a couple hundred megahertz, nearing five gigahertz, we could potentially see with Zen 3, AMG just be the clear dominant chip in every category, both in value as well as performance. Moving it to five nanometers would one, give us more power efficiency, but two, it would also likely increase those performance gains to make that lead even greater. Why AMD would do this this late in the game is unclear. Are they doing it? Probably not. Lisa Su, even yesterday at the annual strategic decision conference was asked about this. And while she didn't give a specific direct, hey, no, we're not doing it. She did state with regards to five nanometers that Zen 4 is on track. 
So she's sticking with the roadmap, which says on Zen 4, they should be on five nanometers. And she also mentioned that GPU should be there. She also happened to mention that with any node, the first products that typically come out are mobile stuff because it's easier to produce. And as we know, AMD just entered into the mobile game, but with Samsung, who has their own foundries. So where's this rumor coming from? Everybody really wanted to know about this, especially in Hot News Live yesterday as we were streaming. The first and like most prolific question we got was, Brett, did you hear? Zen 3 is gonna be on five nanometers. I don't think so. I mean, I, I wanna make a bet that it won't be. Like what would be, what would be? I will install Quibi on my phone if Zen 3 is on five nanometers. That's how confident I am. I will, I will not only install Quibi, I'll pay for Quibi, one month of Quibi if Zen 3 is on five nanometers. That's how much I actually don't believe that this is true, but you can take it for what it is. Let me know what you think of it down below in the comments. But we also have some indication that after Ryzen 4000 with Ryzen 5000, which is expected to be on Zen 3 still, according to this roadmap, and also still be seven nanometers, which goes in against the rumor we just had, it's gonna be codenamed Warhol, obviously named after the American artist Andy Warhol, or as I like to listen to one song back in the day, the Dandy Warhols. We used to be friends a long time ago. I mean, that song absolutely is a tribute to itself. A long time ago, I used to like that song, but I haven't thought of it lately at all until just now. Come on now, sugar. Ring it up, ring it up now. But while we're waiting for Zen 3 and while we're waiting for Ryzen 5000 Warhol, there are other things that I'm waiting for that are more immediate, which are the upcoming Renoir APUs, which we're expecting to be unveiled on June 16th alongside the B550 motherboards, and benchmarks. We got benchmarks for the Ryzen 4700G, 4400G, and the 4200G, and it's kind of disappointing. So here's, here's the caveat. The CPU performance, absolutely phenomenal, destroying the previous one by 57%. The 4200G is 57% faster in the CPU than the 3200G, which is good. AMD is making the GPUs smaller. The highest end one, the 4700G, will only have eight compute units, which is equivalent to the 3200G. The 4200G will only have six compute units, and the 4400G will only have seven compute units. So the highest end one we're getting is equivalent to the lowest end APU that we've had previously. And what we're seeing is the six compute units on the 4200G is 7% slower than the eight compute units on the 3200G. So there are some like Vega improvements that happen on the graphics side of things, but really the biggest update to these APUs is that they're not gonna be as badly CPU bottlenecked. And as we mentioned, they should have a full 16X lane for PCI Express for you to put an actual graphics card on there later. So are you still considering this? Let me know if the, the compute unit thing turns you off on these APUs, I'm keen to hear from you down below. But last little bit of AMD news, which is Lisa Su, Dr. Lisa Su, has taken the number one position as the highest paid CEO from a company as part of the S&P 500. Reported that she made $58.5 million in 2019. Big thanks due to the fact that she's raised the stock price 2,000%. Obviously, we talk here in Hot News a lot about what AMD is doing well, and Dr. Lisa Su absolutely has been leading the company to a lot of success. Maybe, hopefully, it continues. She beat out the second highest earner by 28%, which is Discovery CEO, who earned $45.8 million. So she also earned more than the Disney CEO, who only earned 45.6. Pathetic. So Lisa Su takes a base pay of a million dollars and then the rest are stock options that she gets based on performance, which is what Elon Musk is getting to do. Take a stock option bonus that could pay out $700 million. He got to exercise that. However, uh, there's a big caveat to this. So while you'll see reports that Elon Musk is getting a $700 million payout, there are a few like, not really to that. Number one, their stock option. So he has the option to buy the stock for the company at the price of $350 per share. At the current market value, that would be roughly $700 million worth of shares, but he still has to purchase them. But he can't exercise the options for five years. And if he could sell them, he would have to maintain the stock level above where it is 
above $350 in order to actually make any money off of this in the first place. And this is obviously on top of the fact he's renounced his world possessions in a Twitter post. We'll see if that actually holds up. But uh, yes, Elon Musk, uh, obviously the reason he's earning this money is because he's getting paid because Tesla is performing well, which is good. I think that I mean, maybe maybe the amount is a little ridiculous. Maybe how it's structured is ridiculous. But the idea that CEOs get rewarded for their companies doing well makes sense. He doesn't take a base pay. But there are plenty of other companies where the CEO is getting millions of dollars while their company is going into bankruptcy. South Africa. Hey, not gonna say it. But just a little bit more Tesla news. They cut the prices on some of their cars in North America and China. And by some of their cars, I mean the Model X, the Model S, and the Model 3 all seeing price cuts. The S and the X are $5,000 less. The 3 is $2,000 less. However, the Model Y stays at the same base price. So in case you wanted to get a Tesla, a little bit cheaper now. And then also, I think, starting June 1st or May, it already happened. They're increasing the price of autopilot. That's happening. But what's also happening is new consoles. And Microsoft came out yesterday announcing that they will have thousands of games that are backwards compatible on the Series X. They're doing this just because they can. And they also announced that thanks to AI and just the fact that they're really, really good at their stuff, they're going to implement HDR and 120 FPS into older games just because they can. So bam, you, you, you wanted to play Halo something, one of them on the Series X at 120 FPS and HDR, Microsoft's got you covered. And Sony may have you covered with a new patent that was revealed for an add-on backplate to their controller, which introduces wireless charging. I would love this. It, I kind of understand why they wouldn't introduce it on the controller to begin with, just because it would be too expensive as a part. They're trying to make sure that the cost stays low, but we could potentially see wireless charging on the DualSense controller, which I love a lot more, because even though it's a single cable, I hate plugging my controller in. I'd rather, like, honestly, if the top of the PlayStation has like a coil, and then I just put my controller on that and it charges. That would be so wonderful. I would appreciate that so much. And you should appreciate free games because Borderlands, the handsome collection, is now free on Epic's Game Store. So go check that out. But let's talk about another game store, GOG. They're tied to CD Projekt Red, who just announced that The Witcher series has passed 50 million copies. This is the games, not The Witcher TV series. The game series. 50 million copies. That's a lot of copies. That's a lot of nuts. That's a lot of nuts! But thanks also to GOG, Metro Exodus is getting rid of Denuvo. This is coming after they arrived on GOG, which is a DRM-free platform. So Metro Exodus had to remove Denuvo for that. But with that, they're removing Denuvo on all the other platforms as well. So it's a win for gamers. I think. And what also could be a win for gamers is more cloud gaming. I know a lot of you don't like it, but I don't care. I like cloud gaming. I like the idea of cloud gaming latency doesn't bother me. The reason Stadia sucks is that Google didn't deliver on the promises, not that the actual core feature doesn't work. It was like the core add-on features, like negative latency. They lied about that crap. GeForce Now, phenomenal, in my opinion. Well, Steam is going into beta for their cloud play, and somehow, I'm not exactly sure how this is working, but GeForce Now is going to be a partner for that. Not, not quite sure about the dynamic of how Steam Cloud Play is gonna work with GeForce Now. Maybe they'll use GeForce Now servers and you have to log into both or something like that. Not quite clear, but Steam getting more into the cloud gaming area and Capcom getting more into just making more Resident Evil games. We've gotten a lot lately. Well, Resident Evil 8 was originally planned to release in January. However, it's now been delayed to be somewhere between January and March, according to rumors behind the scenes. And what's not a rumor is that people don't like TikTok sometimes. And there was an internet brigade, people just coming together, trying to get it down to one star on the Google Play Store, so it got completely removed. Well, Google, obviously privy to these things, is seeing that and removing all of those reviews that are part of the brigade. And they've announced that they've removed over 8 million reviews at this point, which has brought their number slightly back up. So there's that. Uh, but there's also the fact that OnePlus has gone away from making cheaper phones. They used to be known as flagship level quality for like just budget level price. Now they're flagship level quality for flagship level pricing. However, their CEO has announced that they are going to be getting back to the more affordable phone category. This goes hand in hand with the previously indicated OnePlus Z that we're expecting to come out. But while we're talking about executives talking about things, the former executive from AMD, who was in charge of their cloud gaming 
and console SOC business, AMD's console business, so PlayStation and Xbox, in charge of their console business, has now joined Intel. <whistles> Intel snagging up a lot of AMD talent. Intel powered consoles. That'd be crazy. If they wanna grab that game, they better go for it. Give us something good. Wow, what, what company could come in and make a console that's not already out there? Let, let's say that AMD retains the Sony and Microsoft partnerships and the Switch is still NVIDIA. What, what company do you see making their own console with Intel? More Atari Vaporware. <laughs> Atari Vaporware. Okay, now give me a legit company. Like what game studio could just be like, yeah, we could do EA. Ooh. EA coming out and making Intel hardware. I don't like that. I think that's a bad thought. I'm gonna get rid of that one. And we're not gonna get rid of this Oppo phone, which Reese really likes. It's an Oppo Evangelion phone, which will only have 10,000 units available. This is obviously to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the anime and the upcoming Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0 thrice upon a time. So in case you like that, it's gonna exist. I don't know where you can find it, but Google it, friends. Purple. It's purple. But Sonic is blue, did you know? And it was tweeted out, round two with the blue. Sonic 2 confirmed. Okay, we got the redesign, now we're getting a second one. It's happening. What's also happening is rumors around 5G. Obviously, we've had some vandalism going on with 5G towers. There's been connections with 5G and coronavirus in a lot of people's minds. And, you know, sometimes you just need protection from 5G. Because, I mean, how do you live in this world when there's waves everywhere intersecting with you, giving you cancer? Well, there's a company who's selling a 5G BioShield, which is a USB key that through a process of quantum oscillation can protect you from 5G. The company BioShield Distribution says it provides protection for your home and family thanks to the wearable holographic nano layer catalyzer, which can be worn or placed near to a smartphone or any other electrical radiation or EMF emitting device. I can't even, what the hell? Oh, um, it costs $347, or if you want to get a pack of three, it only costs you $973. What a deal. What a deal for somebody printing stickers on a USB key. My friends, this, I, you know what? I'm not even gonna say it, because I just hope our audience is smart enough to understand, okay? I'm not even, not gonna, you get no opinion on this. You should be smart enough to buy one. <laughs> <laughs> joke! Ah, you know what else is a joke? Me continuing this episode of Hot News any longer. So let's thank our sponsor once again. Don't forget today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Check them out, the link in the video description. First thousand of you to click, get two months for free. Skillshare Premium. Free learning. Free, free learning. It's free real estate. For your brain. And let's end this episode there. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed to stay up to date on our tech related content. I'm gonna miss you over the weekend. Not as much as I miss my spag bag.